So we have our gases in our bottles. Gases coming out of our bottles, we want to regulate them. This one here, as I say, is a fixed regulator. If we're looking at like this one here is adjustable. This one is a Victor. It's a much older Victor. It says it's bad. I don't think you can buy replacement parts for this. Um, and it's probably just a fitting and mostly scrap brass at this point. But I have a big pile of them and it makes good stuff to show. Now, this one here is a two stage. So what we will have is this portion here, which has a cap, which is just actually turns the whole thing to disassemble it. So it's going to be preset inside. It probably kicks the pressure down since this is an acetylene, it probably kicks the pressure down to like 40 pounds. So you've got good flow past that yet, but it kicks it down so the secondary diaphragm doesn't have to move as much and you get a more accurate setting once you set your pressure. It stays more consistent with a two stage. Most of the time we use one stage because they're way cheaper, way more common and they're good enough. Um, sometimes it can be aggravating. Where it really becomes aggravating is on your smallest of torches. Uh, big torch is not a problem. You start down, getting down in welding torches that are under a number one, number two even sometimes, and your oxygen acetylene mix will change a lot on you, causes you a lot of problems. That's where the two stage is better. Here is a more common, this is a current version of a two stage where they have a, a big regulator with just a bump off to one side and they make or did make the smaller ones with a bump off to one side I don't know for sure if they still do or not I haven't seen a two-stage small Victor regulator for a long time but this is still a, a current version and this one here is not acetylene this one is oxygen and uh, so what it would have is it would have this one here probably to like a 500 PSI. After it came out of the bottle, the first stage probably bring it down to 500 PSI or maybe 200, but it'd be fairly, uh, fairly substantial yet. It would be a lot because you use a higher pressure with oxygen than you do with acetylene. And then this one for your main adjustment. Um, I was showing this here with the flow gauge flow gauge there's a little ball in there so what this does is this you can see how many cubic feet per hour you figure that you're using of your gas is what this meter is about and when you do these you have to look at these and you have to see like this one says carbon dioxide CFH and it says read top of flow and it should say ball before that below that so obviously, you got to be smart enough to read. You got to look at if you have the right scale. This is strictly a CO2 gauge, CO2 um, flow meter on it. Uh, we got, I don't have another one here handy. Okay, we can just explain some things. Anyway, some of these will have all the way around, I have like for four different gases. So you have to make sure you're looking at the right one, the right scale that is for the gas you're using, or it's pretty irrelevant. So now, if we have our inert gas that we're using for shielding on welding, that would be what this one here is for. And this particular unit is a fixed regulator this regulator is a fixed pressure. What you're doing here is you are controlling how much flow it puts out. This one, I believe, is cracked, has crack. Yep, this one is bad. And why does it have all these fins on here? Well, it has all the fins on here because it's for CO2. And CO2 is normally a liquid. It will start coming out of the bottle as liquid, and you don't want liquid coming out at your welding and also it gets to the point where it just doesn't come out actually you have to provide heat this is not the good way to do it um, i was going to go ahead and use this because it came to me along with that welder there but instead now what i was going to get to and i i got talking about other stuff again on 
the regulators, and this is one I've had for a long time. We have a newer one we bought for our miller, but anyway, this is a CO2 uh, regulator here and plugs in. Instead of relying on the ambient air temperature to heat it up, you plug it in, it has a thermostat, heats up to 150 degrees, turns on and off. These are pretty cool. They're more expensive than the other ones. The other one there is $200. These run 425 if you get a good deal on up to close to 1,000. So, um, but these are nicer. This one I've had for a long time. It came with a complete uh, wire feed system uh, with all kinds of extra stuff, diesel powered, that I built stuff with for years before I had the shop. And I fired up once every three or four years now to see if it still runs. But um, it's a <clears throat> Not that it matters, but we're chatting about everything. It is a diesel 55 Miller with an Airco paint job. Airco sold Millers back in the back in the days. It has the Perkins four-cylinder 108 engine, and anyway, it's constant current, constant voltage. Um, they're they're a nice welder. I uh, anyway, this came with it. We bought some others. We have one of, uh, in fact, I can show you a newer one, and this one, that's why I say, you can get them as cheap as 425 because that's what I ended up paying. <laughs> and and this, this is the newer one I bought. And I wouldn't say that it works better or less or worse. Um, it seems to work good. Also, ah, and here is the various gauge. This one has CO2 there. Uh, it has argon over here. And that's all we have on this one is CO2 and argon. So now on that other regulator we were just looking at, it has a flow meter instead of a flow gauge. Although some people could call it a flow gauge too. Terminology all the time. People, people gig me all the time. Oh, that's what I called it. Well, call it what you want. I'm not going to yell at you. You can yell at me if you want to. It raises our ratings when we get more comments, even if they're stupid. But anyway, so what this one has on here is it has a, it's actually a pressure gauge. This is actually a pressure gauge, and we can turn it on here. And because you can see I can adjust it right here. It won't back off. We'll back it way off so that we'll have to readjust it when we turn it on instead of wasting too much gas. But you're actually adjusting a pressure that is calculated for how many cubic foot per hour you will get through the orifice that's in this fitting. So this gauge has to match with the orifice, the hole that's drilled in here. And you could check it by putting a flow gauge in line with it, uh, or flow meter. See there, I use terms either way. I don't know. I forget now which is, and I don't know that there is a definite. Flow, flow gauge, flow meter. I don't know. I don't know. I think they're probably interchangeable. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know. I can say that. I can say I don't know. That's okay once in a while. Anyway, but there's an orifice in here and you're, you're basically just setting pressure that calculates that that's what it is. So all in all, even if the gauge is good, everything's right, it's not as accurate as the one with the actual little ball in it. Then there's another one which is really slick for welding and they make a uh, unit that goes over the outlet. And actually I should get one of those, I meant to, I just now I'm thinking about it again. Uh, and it shows how much gas is actually coming out at the nozzle. So you're actually measuring what's coming out. And I forget whether it had a little spinny fan or balls or balloons or what it had, but it had something that would give you an idea of what's coming out at the nozzle. And uh, that's pretty cool. When we have regulators, we're a little bit shy on propane regulators here. Now he uses the same fitting. You can use an acetylene for it for your, a lot of your gases. But what you'll find, you'll find um, 
fixed low pressure regulators that are gray for propane. And there's the ones for your barbecue that are current, currently have a nut that go on the outside. They don't let much flow through them. They're really made low quality, but that's pretty much the routine for your gas grills today. Uh, they have another gray one, which is a little bit heavier duty, older version, um, about the same size. Then they have one that's quite big, which is when you have more flow. And then they have versions of, and I believe that the fixed ones are 15 PSI, but I'm not sure on that, I forget. Um, but they, the they're adjustable on another version of those. They make ones that are adjustable. Then when you go to red, it will go to higher pressure. This is a red one. This says that it will go to 35 PSI, which lets me know why most of the time when I want high pressure, I just pitch the regulator off and I use the 100 pounds or so that comes out of the bottle because this ain't enough. I've used these before when they weren't enough. I didn't, I had been years since I read what they are. This is the higher pressure, higher pressure is 35 PSI. I can see why I don't normally use them because we normally use more. Not for our cutting with oxygen, but when we're doing straight propane with our weed burners, which we'll show you those here after a bit too. They're cool, it's lots of cool stuff. 